Hi, I'm Colin, and in this video, we're gonna cover retaining wall drainage and why it's one of the most important things to think about when designing and building a retaining wall. The reason why drainage is so important behind a retaining wall system is it's the number one reason a retaining wall can fail. If there's no relief for moisture, excess water that's behind that wall getting into your soil, it can get too heavy and push it over. We're gonna cover three different components to making a great drainage system for your retaining wall to create longevity and performance. So the first component in an ideal drainage system for a retaining wall is gonna be a perforated pipe. Here, this is a slitted piece of corrugated pipe, so it's flexible and typically really easy to use. So what this is, is it basically creates a highway to relieve moisture and water that's built up behind a retaining wall as fast as possible. If your soil is retaining moisture and there's no escape for that water, it can create a heavier load behind the wall and promote failure. The way that you install one of these, you create a ramp with the gravel, typically at a half a percent or more of slope, then you exit it through the block face by either cutting a notch per the size of the pipe or you're using something like a wall drain pro or a spillway. Another key addition to the drain system behind a retaining wall is gonna be a compacted gravel backfill. What this does is it creates weight behind a retaining wall to help tie it into that hill or whatever it's retaining to create more structure. On top of that, when you use something like a three quarter clear or one inch crush clear open rock, you also add extra drainage to relieve of that excess moisture and not retain it in your soil. What you typically would do is excavate for a retaining wall and put your base construction in there. Then as you stack your wall blocks, you add three quarter inch open or one inch open clear crushed gravel behind it and four inch lifts and hand tamp or compact that to acquire optimal compaction. Now the final component we're gonna talk about in this video today for retaining wall drainage is a piece of geotext. Now there are various different kinds. What we wanna see behind the retaining wall system is non-woven. It means it has permeability to it. It's basically like a thick landscape fabric. Now what this does is it keeps soil from migrating into your gravel backfill. Soil gets into gravel backfill, it can expand and contract through freeze thaw cycles. It can drain or clog up your drain rock and lessen or worsen your retaining wall drainage. So what you would do is lay this on top of your compacted gravel base and then wrap it up the back of your wall and then over the top of your gravel backfill so that all the water that gets into your gravel backfill is clean, there's no dirt in there, and it gets out of your system quickly. So if you're building a retaining wall and you're wondering which of these to choose from, it is obviously optimal if you choose all three of these. If you do all three of them properly, you will have a better performing retaining wall system in any climate or any soil type out there. We're not saying that you won't have failure if you don't do all these things, but these are all entrances to ensure you get optimal performance from your retaining wall system. Nobody wants to repair a failing retaining wall. It's going to cost you double the amount of getting it installed properly the first time. Also, if you have any other hardscape projects coming up, whether they're about paving stones or retaining wall blocks, make sure you check out the videos on our YouTube channel or the blog articles on our website. 